Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for coming. So we're going to be looking at the future of media formats. Uh, just a very brief introduction. Uh, my name is Martin Bryant. I'm European editor at The Next Web, which is uh, one of the big uh, technology news websites. So uh, media is at an exciting crossroads. This is an exciting crossroads in uh, Tokyo. Um, and uh, people just walk in like eight directions at once. It's brilliant. But uh, media is very much in a similar um, situation at the moment, where the shackles of physical formats are being thrown aside, and suddenly anything is possible. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, uh, traditional forms of media moving online, but also pretty much anything is now possible. And we're seeing some really exciting examples of new formats being created through that. So, uh, as I said, physical formats being pushed aside. Now, when I started thinking about uh, the future of media formats for this, I kind of hit this sticking point here. I thought, okay, so, uh, you know, we've got newspapers going online and becoming, uh, in very much, in many cases, websites first, paper supplements you can buy if you want to every day. Um, uh, as a secondary thing, The Guardian in the UK, gone digital first completely. Uh, Spotify, that great Swedish invention. Uh, to putting wh whatever music you want pretty much uh, in your pocket or uh, on your computer without you actually having to physically download anything. We've got Netflix doing a similar thing for movies and TV shows. And so I thought, yeah, okay, that's all fine and good, but so does that mean that media formats are dead? Is the cloud, has the cloud just replaced all media formats? And uh, I actually started tweeting about this and saying, this is it. The the cloud is the ultimate media format. Everything else is dead. And someone, well, actually, no, it's a delivery method, really, Martin. Don't don't go on stage and say that. That would be ridiculous. So uh, uh, thanks to uh, Tim Difford uh, in the UK who told me not to say that. So, uh, but, um, uh, but it's true, you know, those things have been pushed aside. But... Uh, that is boring. It's just old formats repurposed. Uh, that's not where the fun is. It's convenient. Um, I don't know how many of you actually will yawn when you see that word. I, uh, I, I was going through this yesterday, and it's, it's like an instruction, so I'll quickly move on. Um, new media formats instead exploit the possibilities that new technology offers. And uh, there are some brilliant examples already emerging. I think over the next few years, we're going to see all sorts of playful experimentation in uh, new media formats. So uh, just a, a couple of examples. Well, first of all, interactive music. Um, RJ DJ, uh, a company in London, um, they create interactive musical experiences for the iPhone. They did one for the movie Inception. And uh, it was basically, the idea was you'd indru induce dream worlds. And it was a way of experiencing music from the soundtrack of Inception. And the music that you'd experience would change depending on things like where you were, how many people were around you. There's one piece of music uh, within the app that if there are three people in, within a 100 meters radius using the same app, listening to the same music, you get a certain mix of the music. A few more people come into that radius, suddenly the music builds up to something more. So it's changing the idea of um, how we experience music into something a bit more... Uh, Interesting, and um, there's one experience you had to go to Africa to unlock, and apparently some people actually travel to Africa to just listen to that music. And uh, it's quite funny, because uh, what Bill Drummond was saying earlier about um, uh, music, maybe you'd have to go to certain places to experience it, that is basically uh, that uh, in app form. Uh, Björk, uh, her latest album uh, has been released as a, an iPhone and iPad app, and uh, it's uh, rather fantastic. Um, uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, some of you at the front will be able to see this, some of you in the middle can squint, those, those of you at the back will probably have to imagine it, but um, uh, you uh, basically um, move around this 3D galaxy and you can zoom in on different stars in this galaxy to experience different songs from the album. So uh, if we just go into uh, the one crystalline here, uh, they did a really clever thing here as well. The app is free and you unlock the songs for £1.49 each um, and uh, they're staggering them. Which means, you know, I wouldn't have bought them all. I'd have bought a couple just to try it out. But because they're coming out maybe you know, one a week or whatever, I'll probably end up pay paying nearly 20 quid for the whole thing. But uh, so, Crystalline. In Crystalline, Björk explores spatial and structural similarities in crystals and music, using them to express changes between closed and open emotional states. The effort to connect with other people and unite internal and external worlds. So it's kind of like an artistic statement that brings in her own music, uh, brings in interactivity into something um, that you can actually experience. And uh, probably the music will be too quiet on a, especially on an iPad 2, 
why did why did they make the the music uh, the speaker so rubbish on an iPad 2? So uh, then you have this game that you uh, play and you rotate around and you can collect different shapes. And as you collect the shapes, the song builds up and you can take different paths through the app. And uh, it's just a, a, a way of exploring the song. And um, uh, there's another one where you can actually, uh, it's, a, it's an instrument and you move cells around on the screen, like uh, biological cells. Uh, it's a song called Virus and you move, uh, move it around and you can create, it's like an instrument that plays the song if you move them around in the right way. So uh, um, lots of interesting things going on in music. Social news, I won't spend long on this because we all know about Flipboard and how it's uh, making news social and creating a, um, a, a, an excellent user experience that brings in the things that uh, your friends are sharing online and turns it into a, a magazine you can experience on your iPad. Um, another interesting take on that is uh, Bitly's uh, news.me, which uh, is a very different way of doing it. It's like if uh, it's got Fred Wilson there, if you go to Fred Wilson's channel, you don't see all the things he's sharing, you see the things that his Twitter followers are sharing. And it's kind of algorithmic, algorithmically weighted and things. Um, but so it's, it's some kind of passive curation. It's kind of Fred Wilson or whoever you select at the top. People, it's whoever you follow on Twitter who uh, is also using it. Um, it's like passive curation of uh, what they think you should, um, uh, should, should be reading without them ever, ha ever, ever having to actually choose anything or even actually read it themselves. So uh, there are a few r very interesting ways of looking at social news. And um, uh, Churdeep, who's going to be speaking later, is going to be talking a bit more about how the way that um, news consumption is changing. Um, now, malleable social data. Um, I think this, this isn't really a new media format, it's, but it's something that's going to guide uh, new media formats uh, and the way they evolve. Uh, I don't know if you saw um, Intel's uh, Museum of Me, which is a fascinating website. It's probably still alive. Um, it, was, it was essentially just a, a video, um, a, a 3D rendered video tour of a museum. But you entered your Facebook details and it turned it into a museum about your life as you've shared it on Facebook. So there was a, a gallery of your photographs um, of your profile pictures or photos you've shared. Um, I think this was maybe videos that you've liked or things that you've liked. Hence, there's a big statue of a thumb uh, in the middle. Um, and it took you on this tour and there was haunting music accompanying it as, you, as it went through. And it kind of felt like a kind of epitaph to your life in digital form in, in a way. It was, it was kind of a little creepy. But the fact that even though this was just designed to say, isn't Intel cool, the idea that you could basically go watch this and get an emotional response, even if it was, that's a bit creepy. It was still, that's really powerful as well. And the fact that this social data that we're all generating through services like Facebook, through Twitter, um, how that can interface with new mashups of existing media is going to create all sorts of interesting uh, new uh, techniques and things in future. Imagine if, if, if this was brought into that Inception app, for example, how your social data, things you shared on Twitter, for example, could change the music you listen to. Um, so what else could we see? Um, uh, the reason I put this up is because there's something else that, um, uh, that I really want to see that isn't actually available yet, but it's um, going to be really cool if it happens. Um, you've probably heard of like Google TV and uh, Apple TV, set-top boxes connected to the internet that um, uh, will, in the future, allow third-party developers to create apps for your TV. Now, I'm sure that when the apps first arrive, um, uh, we know that Google is opening this up to developers at the moment, but um, uh, I'm sure Apple will as well because uh, Apple TV runs iOS, basically. Um, uh, initially, the apps will be things like, I don't know, HBO. HBO subscribers can watch anything on demand on their TV um, uh, through the app. And that'll be you know, pretty nice and convenient, but nothing very exciting. But imagine if you had, for example, a game show in an app and the game show was, it was a, a normal televised show that people could watch and non-interactively, and imagine it was something like people running around a city, and they had to go and collect items around the city, and uh, the cameras followed them around. Now imagine if you then had the app version of that, which could tie into it, and you had your iPhone or whatever mobile phone, and you could actually flick items onto the map in, uh, in real time from your phone for people really running around the city to collect, and there'd be a race to collect these virtual items that viewers were throwing out onto the map to collect. Suddenly, the idea of what a game show is and the idea of interactivity 
goes somewhere new. And is it an app? Is it a TV show? What is it? And I don't think this has been done yet, but um, I hope it will be. I hope it will be done in future because it'd be it'd be amazing, and the appification of TV is going to be huge. So uh, um, please, please, somebody do that. And um, so basically, that, that is my thought. Imagine it, build it, because I'm sure there are people in this room who are either in a position to build um, new media formats, in a position to commission or influence new media formats. And uh, as a technology journalist who writes about this kind of thing and gets excited about it, please imagine it, build it. Don't let us just passively consume. Uh, there's a role for that. It's great. But there's so much more creativity and interactivity that can be done with um, new emerging media formats.